All right. Well, welcome, everybody. It's a pleasure to see you all this evening or this morning, depending on where you are. My name is Andrew Gordon. I'm a history uh, member of the History Department, a faculty member at Harvard in the Department of History and of East Asian Languages and Civilizations. And it's my great pleasure to moderate this evening's event, which is co-sponsored with the program on U.S.-Japan relations and co-sponsored by the Department of History at Harvard University. It's a special pleasure to welcome Bill Steele as our speaker tonight because I've known him since I was an undergraduate at Harvard College in the about a quarter of the way back into the previous century as I think <laughs> about it. It would have been 1972 or three that I did a junior tutorial in East Asian studies and Bill as a PhD candidate in history and East Asian languages ran the junior tutorial. And that's when I first met Bill and another graduate student at the time, Trish Sippel, who uh, Bill later had the very good sense to marry. And um, they've been great friends in their family with me and my wife and uh, my family ever since. And so this is really a special pleasure. Bill did his PhD, his BA at the University of California, Santa Cruz in 1969, he's from California, and then the PhD at Harvard. He worked on the history of the Bakumatsu era, and his dissertation focused on one key figure in the collapse of the Tokugawa Bakufu, the man who peacefully handed over the keys to Edo Castle to the insurgents from the southwest, Katsukaishu. After his dissertation, Bill went to Japan and taught for a couple of years at ICU, 1976 to 78, then returned for two years to be an instructor in modern Japanese history at Harvard, and then returned to ICU. And since 1981 until his retirement a few years ago, Bill has Bill taught his entire career at International Christian University, ICU, where he was the anchor for their programs on Japanese history, teaching many generations of students. Over the years, he's published widely in the history of Japan, especially focused on the 19th century, some in Japanese as well as in English. Uh, he's had a long-standing interest in um, prints and cartoons, not only of the contemporary sort that you'll learn about tonight, but of prints of the 19th century. He edited a book in 2012, Poking Fun at the Restoration, satirical prints in late 19th century Japan. He also published a set of his essays recently in Japanese translation, Meiji Ishin to Kindai Nihon no Atarashi Mikata, uh, which is going to be published in its English version by the Harvard Asia Center monograph series in the near future, which I'm delighted to see is going to happen. In addition to his interest in uh, the political history of the late Tokugawa into the early Meiji era. He's also written on the movement for freedom and popular rights. Bill has done some work which brought us into connection again uh, on the history of a important object in, the, in modern Japan, the bicycle. I was working on sewing machines, Bill was working on bicycles, and we managed to somehow cobble together a conference at Oxford on um, the history of bicycles and sewing machines in the UK and Japan, which was a wonderfully fun activity. And Bill's work on the history of the bicycle in Japan is really fascinating. Today, however, he is going to talk to you about um, political cartoons of the present. Uh, the, the title of the talk, and in a minute, I'll turn things over to Bill after mentioning uh, one upcoming current event and uh, going over the Zoom etiquette. Uh, the talk is titled Japan in an Era of Uncertainty, Jabs by Editorial Cartoons 2020 to 2021. There'll be one uh, further event in this semester, I believe it's the last one, um, coming up after Thanksgiving on December 6, James Schof will speak on High Tech Alliance, Pursuing Economic Security Through Closer U.S.-Japan Science and Technology Collaboration. And I hope you'll join that. As you all probably well know, uh, during a Zoom presentation, we appreciate it if you keep your microphone muted. 
except when you're speaking. And there are two ways you can um, participate in the Q&A. You can write and ask a question in chat, or you can use the raised hand button. And Bill will speak today for about 30 minutes, and then we should have about a half an hour or, or close to half an hour of uh, Q&A. So let me turn things over to Bill. Okay. Well, uh, hello, everyone. And Andy, thank you for the very generous introduction. Um, those were, that was some 50 years ago. Wow. Well, for the past year and a half, uh, due to the spread of COVID-19 in Japan, uh, my wife and I have lived as good stay-home citizens, wearing our masks, washing our hands, maintaining social distance. Uh, you all know the drill. The Asahi newspaper is delivered daily. Uh, and from February last year, I began to read and cut out and then translate uh, as best I could uh, the editorial cartoons. I, I sent them around to friends, including Andy and some others who are here tonight. And I thank you all for your comments and help in trying to kind of interpret these rather difficult um, symbolic uh, messages that were included in the cartoons. Uh, I'm using these editorial cartoons as one way to understand the ominous events of our day. And I'm grateful for this opportunity to share uh, with you some of the results of my stay home Corona hobby. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay. Um, I'm going to focus on the um, cartoon coverage of the long expected and then much dreaded hosting of the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics, originally scheduled for the late summer of 2020, but because of the pandemic postponed to 2021. Despite fears that the Tokyo Olympics would unleash a Godzilla COVID variant that would terrorize the world, the great sporting event was held during a fifth wave of infections. And it came and went and is now almost forgotten. However, the coronavirus, while on decline, is still with us. November 22nd, which is your today and my yesterday, thanks to a late but aggressive vaccination campaign and other factors, the numbers are significantly lower. Nationwide new infections for the 22nd of November, um, they uh, are just 50. And in Tokyo, only six. And 76.2% of the population is now fully vaccinated. Uh, the comparable US figure is 59%. Nonetheless, uh, there is much uncertainty about a possible sixth wave. Uh, I'm going to talk first about uh, political cartoons in general and how to read them. And next I'll follow the period just before, during and after the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics, basically May through October of this year with a focus on former Prime Minister Suga Yoshihide and his struggle, as you can see in the cartoon there, and his struggle with the Corona devil. In essence, this is the story of the pandemic Olympics as reflected in the jabs of the Asahi cartoons. I will conclude with some brief comments on more recent uh, and unfolding events and on what we can learn from the cartoons. Japan has a long history of political satire, often in cartoon form, relying on visual and textual symbols and puns and double meanings. I used uh, late Tokugawa political cartoons to help understand how ordinary people experienced the Meiji Restoration of 1868. 
Uh, these were standalone broadsheets or woodblock prints and often anonymous. And you can see one of them here on the screen. It's a parody of the very decisive battle of Ueno Hill, the defeat of the Shogitai. That's on the 15th day of the fifth month, 1868. The action here in the, in the print, however, appears to be children at play. But in reality, the print depicts a bloody battle in which Choshu, and you can see him at the top of the screen there, holding the boy emperor, and at his left, uh, the uh, Satsuma, uh, these clans from the Southwest claim victory, while Aizu and other Northeastern domains bow to continue the fight. And actually the civil war continues on to the, almost to the end of 1868. Well, uh, from the Meiji period, political cartoons were regular features in newspapers and magazines, often modeled uh, after British and American media. Recently, however, as an art form and as a source of critical comment, editorial cartoons have declined in significance and active readership. The golden years of political satire were probably in the late Meiji period, and again in the early post-war years. The Asahi and other dailies once featured cartoons seven days a week in both morning and evening editions. But since 2011, however, the uh, Asahi runs only four cartoons a week with three cartoonists taking turns. The senior cartoonist, Hadi Sunao was born in 1933 He's now 88 years old. Uh, he began his career as a political cartoonist in the early 1950s. Yamada Shin, born in 1940, is 81 years young. And Yaku Mitsuru, born in 1959, is only 63. Well, like the future of Japan, the future of print, as opposed to online, political satire is uncertain. I have included in the recommended reading two studies that attempt to explain why political comedy has become relatively relative weak, especially in comparison to the United States and the United Kingdom. One reason offered is that the visual and verbal language of satire is increasingly difficult to understand. Another reason is that people are reading newspapers less. Well, in Japan, still the readership is one of the highest in the world, if not the highest, but uh, still it's declining. Though, as both authors point out, there are alternate sites of vibrant political satire on the internet, social media, YouTube, and on stage. Meanwhile, Asahi cartoonists continue to jab at Japan's political and economic elite, seeking to encourage people to reflect on the uncertain situation in which they find themselves and on the methods and motives of their so-called political superiors. As you can see, recent Asahi editorial cartoons still pack a punch. The cartoon on the left of the screen, that's the April 22nd, 2020, cartoon, it identifies the COVID-19 pandemic as World War III and compares the call to shelter at home, stay home, to the dark days of the air raids of World War II. And the April 18th cartoon on the right satirizes the leaders of the world, Japan included, criticizing their weak and disorganized response to the pandemic swirling beneath them. And look at the jabs taken at the former Prime Minister Suga by Yamada Shin in this November 12th, 2020 cartoon. On at least 80 instances, Suga showed his skill at avoiding clear answers to important questions, causing some to call him a master of evasion. His full body denial suit is covered with denials, including Denial of clarity, denial of responsibility, denial of opposing views, denial of scholarship and science, denial of pursuing investigation, even denial of goodwill. This is death by 100 jabs. 
You've probably noticed that the coronavirus is often associated as a devil in Asahi cartoons. In fact, Japan has a long history of depicting disease as a devil, often from outside. The image on the left shows Japan under attack by the cholera devil. That was back in 1858. The sumo wrestler represents Japan and cholera is represented as a foreign devil. In fact, the cholera came into Japan through Nagasaki. Um, note that the Japanese sumo wrestler has the upper hand. Similarly, in the middle image, a devil, here is Kazen Okami, was thought to be responsible for the influenza epidemic of 1918 to 1920. It had to be expelled here by modern medicine. And on the right, the corona devil appears more powerful than in these earlier manifestations. The Asahi cartoons suggest that such a strong devil should be confronted by a strong political leader. But in this case, former Prime Minister Abe Shinzo is clearly not up to the task. Following Abe's resignation in September 2020, Suga Yoshihide became Prime Minister, but he too proved unable to defeat the Corona Devil. In a policy speech in January 2021, Suga pledged that he would contain the virus and it spread within one month, but he proved a weak opponent, especially after the Delta variant arrived in late spring, producing a fourth and then a fifth wave of infections. In the image on the right, you can see Suga trying to fight both the original Corona devil and the Delta mutant. The dominant issue facing Japan and its political leaders in the late spring and summer of 2021 was the fate of the Tokyo Olympics. It was scheduled to begin on July the 23rd. It was originally branded as the Recovery Olympics. It was going to show the world that Japan was back, back after the triple disasters, the 311 disasters in northeastern Japan. And, uh, but uh, by the end of May 2021, the Olympics were very much in doubt. Opinion polls showed that 80% of Japanese people didn't want them to be held. On May 26, the Asahi Shimbun issued an editorial demanding that Prime Minister Suga decide against holding the Olympics and the Paralympics. There was no response. A petition to cancel the Olympics with over 350,000 signatures, including mine, was rejected. Ignoring these calls and his own rock bottom approval ratings, Prime Minister Suga stubbornly stuck to his mantra. I will work to make sure that the Olympics are safe and secure. The May 29th, 2021 Asahi cartoon shows Suga, Tokyo Governor Koike Yuriko, and Olympics Minister Marukawa Tamayo nearing the end of the Olympic hosting marathon with blinders on as they ignore voices of protest. By uh, and now attempting to make up for a late start, in June, Suga accelerated the vaccination rollout, beginning with mass vaccination centers in Tokyo and Osaka, followed by workplace and university sites, vaccination some, uh, numbers increased to well over 1 million a day. This was a remarkable turnaround, but unfortunately for Suga, problems of supply caused the government to slow down the rollout. As the July 25th cartoon shows, Suga was caught in a delicate balancing act, hoping to advance vaccinations as a means uh, of holding a safe and secure Olympics, and also as a means to secure his own political future. 
by early July, the highly contagious Delta variant was spreading rapidly. The head of Japan's COVID-19 task force, Omi Shigeru, announced that Japan was at a most crucial stage. Although Suga declared that the numbers will start to decline at the end of July, they only increased and went higher and higher. The dreaded fifth wave had arrived. The July 7th cartoon has Prime Minister Suga shouting, row with all your might as the Olympic Stadium is about to go under. And two boats of Japan's Olympic officials are barely able to stay afloat. <laughs> Only the IOC president, Thomas Bach, rides high on Hokusai's great wave. On July 23rd, the opening ceremony day, Tokyo, Tokyo reported 1,149 new COVID-19 cases. The July 24th cartoon featured the opening kickoff of the games taking place amid mass resignations of staff and volunteers. The Olympic Stadium is sent flying, uh, spreading corona droplets everywhere. In the end, the Olympics were held relatively successfully and apparently safely. Japan, re Japan scored a record 27 gold medals and watching these national victories on TV, since there was no spectators allowed, people in Japan warmed to the event. Foreign observers were impressed with the facilities and safety measures. Japan did and was able to show the world that it could hold the games during a global pandemic. But this success did nothing to help Suga's political fortunes. Infections continued to rise within Japan reaching a one-day total of 5,042 on August the 5th, when the games ended. And what remained after the festival, what remained after the Olympic festival, bills to pay and a mess to clean up. And this mess all landed on Prime Minister Suga's shoulders. Here you see here, red ink and approval ratings on the guy, infections on the rise. In the witty saying for August 22nd, shown in the middle of the screen, Suga was characterized as the leader with nothing. No action, no planning, no care, no compassion, no sense, and no weight. Another 1,000 jabs. Suga's term as head of the LDP was limited to one year. He had hoped to be reelected, but uh, the August 28th cartoon shows that failure to control the Corona devil had damaged his election prospects. The September 2nd cartoon published two days before the election shows him in free fall. On September the 3rd, with the Paralympics still underway, Suga shocked his colleagues and the general public with the news that he would not seek re-election. On that day, he sat in morning meetings as usual, and only at a 11.30 special LDP meeting announced in a rather matter of, a matter of, matter of fact meet, uh, manner his decision to withdraw from the race. As the September 4th political cartoon asks, are decisions relating to national affairs made in such a light manner? And Suga is shown at his favorite breakfast spot and he's telling the waitress, well, I'll have a cup of coffee and a resignation and well, maybe something else. Everyone around him is surprised. Kishida Fumio was elected to succeed Suga as head of the LDP on September the 29th and as prime minister on October the 4th. As the October 6th cartoon shows, it had become Kishida's turn to challenge the Corona devil. He had won the election, but victory over the Corona devil remained elusive. However, since the middle of October, things seemed to be looking up for Kishida. 
the daily, infection, uh, the daily infection count nationwide had fallen, first to below 500 by November 1st to 235, then on November the 9th, below 100. And really no one seems to know why, but as I mentioned before, the, the number for your today, my yesterday, was 50 nationwide and six for Tokyo. With Chinese chess shogi very much in the news at that time, the November 17th cartoon shows Kishida pitted against the Corona devil and playing what he thinks to be the willing move. Take that, he says. Dora. He has just announced his latest anti-corona policy that had scheduled an early rollout for a third booster shot vaccination. It looks like he's finally, it looks like he's finally got the upper hand, uh, but you can see here, checkmate Ote, but note that question mark right after the checkmate. The corona devil has not given up yet. Editorial cartoons in Japan and elsewhere use image, text, and humor to present a quick, pungent message, a jab. They inform us how people at this time, at this instant, experienced and interpreted events around them. Anyone interested in bottom-up views of history will treasure these valuable historical documents. But the cartoons were not produced for historians like me or you. Relying on humor and satire and parody, editorial cartoons seek to provoke thought and action regarding current events, especially events that threaten the well-being of society. Political cartoons seek to entertain, yes, but more importantly, to educate, and to inform the public of what is taking place around them. To what extent the Asahi cartoons, like those around the world, fulfill this mission is open to question. Three years ago, when the editors of the New York Times ended its long tradition of political cartooning, there was significant outcry, including this cartoon from the Washington Post that proclaims, Editorial cartoonists are democracy's canary in a coal, in a coal mine. And uh, is the, a silenced cartoonist is an indicator of an unhealthy environment for freedom of expression. Well, today I've shared with you uh, some of the things I've learned from my mm, self-imposed here corona hobby to better understand how satire and political humor changed the way people experienced the 2021 Tokyo games, I really need to go beyond the Asahi newspaper and their cartoons and look at other newspapers, uh, the Mainichi, the, uh, also the Tokyo Shimbun and the, uh, and the other newspapers, as well as political humor online and on social media. Um, I, I put this book here uh, uh, also uh, online here. This is uh, the uh, a political kind of cartoonist, uh, Sato Masaki, uh, who is actually not only publishes in Tokyo Shim, but then actually publishes volumes of his, his cartoons on current issues. I need to go beyond the Asahi, but also to go one step further, I need to make international and even historical comparisons. And I refer you to one article on the pandemic of 1918-19. Interestingly, as you can probably see on the cartoon on the right, uh, these 1918-1919 editorial cartoons had little political content, focusing primarily on health issues. Well, I'll end here, and I look forward to your comments and to your questions. Thank you very much. Okay. Now.
Thank you so much, Bill. That was really fascinating. I okay. seen some that you shared with me um, along the way, but not most of those. So mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I want to turn to a couple of the associates in the program of US Japan relations for the questions and others who have questions, please post them in chat or raise your hand and I will call on you. But first will be Kaoru Iokibe, who, as you know, is a professor of Japanese history at the University of Tokyo. And he's here with us at the program on US-Japan relations this year, working on um, comparison between Meiji uh, era Treaty of Commerce and Amity, and also the post-war US-Japan security treaty. So Iokibe-sensei, mm -hmm. onegaishimasu. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Professor Gordon. Uh, Professor Steele, uh, it is an honor to talk with you. <laughs> I, I admire your hobby uh, during stay home. And I never much, but actually mine was to make manga uh, uh -huh. during stay home. Uh, I'm Because I'm currently serving as an editor of the next volume of the manga series of Kadokawa Company, Nihon oh, no yeah. Rekishi, Japanese uh -huh. history. Yeah. And I must cover 10 years from the Great East Japan earthquake and to this year and release this next year. So it's quite tough. And I owe, owe much to your cartoons and commentaries tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. My question is uh, very simple. Um, do you see many and interesting cartoons about opposition politicians recently? Mm -hmm. I ask this because our program is not only the government, but also a vicious cycle um, between the government and opposition parties. Mm -hmm. The opposition is unable to take over. They seem to raise issues too much more than to solve the issues. And then Suga had some reason, never adequate, uh, not to listen. And mm -hmm. as a result, as your cartoons depict, uh, we get a policy driven by impulse. I agree that without a canary to cry, we overlook the danger in the pitch. And we also agree that with a canary uh, crying all the time, we will again overlook the danger. So do you see quite a few cartoons about the oppositions? And if you do, I'd like to have your comments on them. And if you don't, it is interesting mm -hmm. and concerning. Their most important job is, of course, to criticize the power, check the power, uh, the, the job of uh, uh, you know, car cartoonists. Um, mm -hmm. But it does not mean that, the, that cartoonists should only second the opposition's parts of the vicious cycle. And then they used to illustrate socialist leaders during Cold War, and they were interesting figures. So I am curious, and that's the mm -hmm. background of my question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, of course, today I focus mainly on the Olympics uh, issue, but uh, of course, right now we're in a election for the um, leader of the Constitutional Democratic Party, uh, who will be replacing Edano. And uh, yes, um, uh, Edano and the election does uh, is the occasion of a number of political cartoons. Edano himself being a tree branch often is a, the, out on a limb somewhere. Um, and uh, so there are a number of cartoons recently on this. Uh, and then the, the lineup of the four, uh, the four contestants and saying, you know, we, perhaps uh, interestingly, I think one cartoon about three or four days ago, uh, showed a, the Constitutional Democratic Party as a tree, and then one uh, branch, and, and the tree leaning a little bit to the left, but one branch in which most of the candidates were on uh, was all leaning over to the right side uh, and kind of waving the tree over to the right. Uh, so I, I, there are cartoons like that. Um, but I think, uh, and then if I go back to the uh, time of the election of Kishida, uh, and that time, there was actually much more uh, coverage of the opposition of the of the LDP election, uh, the uh, uh, the various candidates, uh, including Kishida, uh, for the, to succeed Suga, uh, who would take his chair. And so there was a whole succession of that. I would say that relatively uh, there were fewer uh, for, for more on the LDP uh, election than there are in the current. Uh, a current uh, opposition party. And then also, as, apart from the elections, then I would say there are very few uh, cartoons that actually take up the positions of the opposition parties uh, during the, the, the ordinary session 
uh, they were only on these certain election issues. Does it do they, do they you, you see a number of cartoons? I hope that helps a little bit. Thank you very much. I learned a lot again. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Well, thank you. So one more question from our fellows, um, and especially appropriate given your use of um, the Asahi cartoons for the talk today. Uh, Yosuke Takashima from the Asahi Shimbun is a oh. fellow in the US-Japan Relations Program this mm -hmm. year, working on the causes of the rise of populism in, and its impact on US-Japan wow. relations. Good, good so topic. takashima san onegaishimasu. Yes. Thank you very much for your Thank interesting you. analysis and the presentation. Um, great political cartoons provoke discussions by presenting scathing criticism, uh, scar, uh, uh, sarcasm, and a metaphor. On the other hand, in the age of social media, some or many people tend to amplify opinions that agree with their own while ex excluding those opinions deeper leading to the formation of radical communities. So in today's society with it, with- Can you speak up a little? It's a little hard to hear you. Can you hear me? It's very faint. Well, uh, well excluding those opinions differ leading to the formation uh, of radical communities. So in, in today's society with the influence of such an echo chamber environment, in some cases, I think there is also a danger that political cartoons may result in increased political mistrust and the polarization. What do you think about the uh, contemporary significance and the problems of political cartoons in such a modern society? Okay, thank you. I think I got the question. Um, the for certain, and you know, I have focused on Asahi um, uh, cartoons, and Asahi is on the liberal side of things. And uh, Asahi readers uh, basically uh, are pretty well. It's like uh, New York Times. Uh, you know, the the New York Times uh, point of view is is the readers are fairly well. Uh, agreed with the uh, position of the New York Times on thing. And then there are people completely op opposed to that uh, who don't read it. So yes, yes, uh, I'd say that the readers of the uh, Asahi cartoons pretty much agree. Uh, and they probably don't spend too much time looking at the cartoons. They, say, they make a glance at it. They don't really study it in detail. And it's really sometimes really hard to pick out what's really being said there. But they, they get us a general impression. Oh, yes, this is uh, this, this. I agree with this and then move on. Uh, so I think you're probably right. Uh, the, there tends to inc probably increase more political, politi um, uh, what do you call it, polarization. Uh, there are sites online uh, which are more mm, to the right wing side of things, uh, various. Um, uh, so that uh, people tune in there and then they kind of will dismiss the, the, the uh, uh, Asahi cartoons. Uh, and then of course, um, as, but I said, I haven't really gone in yet to make some comparisons with the print media comparing with the Mainichi or with the, uh, I really would like to spend a little bit more time on uh, a cartoonist who not only is publishing in the newspaper daily and those cartoons come and go, but actually has compiled uh, his cartoons on certain topics and publish them in a book form. This is this Sato Masaaki for the Tokyo Shimbun. Uh, and uh, they do have a, and this, and probably there are um, attempts here and there to make a more um, generalized uh, audience, uh, attract a more general audience through this, uh, through print media here like this, or on the, on the online versions. So, yeah. Um, I'm afraid uh, just uh, as in the United States, uh, there is um, you know, people who read this, the New York Times only that and don't look at the Fox News and then there are Fox News people who don't look at, at the New York Times and dismiss each other. And maybe that's a trend that's actually been going on for some time in Japan as well. Great, Great. well, thank you, Bill. There's uh, several questions from the floor, but I wanna jump in with one 
myself and then turn to the I think we'll have time for all those that have been posted. I was astonished at the birth years of the three cartoonists. <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, it gives new meaning to the word permanent employment. 1933, 1940, and then the young fellow. Well, first of all, all fellows, I guess. And um, do you have any insight into the thinking? I mean, I'm asking you to go beyond the service of the cartoons into the editorial decision making. Maybe you don't. But in an era when young people seem to be leaving old media behind for new media, mm -hmm. why not take a flyer on some of the many, many, many young cartoonists yeah, yeah. who are publishing all over the place and put one or two of them occasionally in the newspaper as a way to mm -hmm. grab some attention would seem to be a tactic i'd imagine what's going on with this reliance on the these um veterans <laughs> i think you might have to ask the people at asahi that question i don't yes, know i'm i'm um, wondering if you've read anything about it of course that's um, Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that probably it's not just Japan alone. Uh, some of the major dailies uh, around the world uh, actually have probably either older or fairly well established uh, cartoonists and that the more active stuff is really taking place off offline or off, I mean, off print. Uh, the um, you know, as you say, permanent employment, that, that uh, he's, some people have been there working since the 1950s, well into his 80s, 88 years old. So, uh, yeah, uh, and it's, and, you know, the, uh, a few years ago, when I left the ICU campus and moved here, we decided we'd give up the print version. Uh, of the newspaper and just read uh, Japan Times and Asahi on, online. Uh, the online version doesn't include the cartoons. Uh, about three years ago, we decided, oh, we've got kind of natsukashi, we want to see the print again. And actually it makes a big difference to read thing in print. But uh, had I not uh, gone back to the newspaper, the print, I wouldn't have even seen these cartoons. Uh, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't searching out uh, on, in, on the internet for uh, political satire and so forth at that point. So, um, yeah, uh, the Asahi Shimbun online version just doesn't even include any cartoons. Uh, oh. I, th I think it's a, it's a mistake. I think, they, they, as you say, there are talented people. There are satirists. There are people who uh, are witty and so forth and could appeal to a rather broad audience. But the newspapers seem to be really confined to uh, the, 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 they're keeping their people <laughs> employed. Um, it, it's going to have to change. Now, uh, you know, as you said, the New York Times said in 2019 was the end as well. They just didn't see any kind of particularly, maybe it was a more profit or uh, in terms of a financial decision rather than a creative decision or editorial decision. Uh, but um, mm, yeah, doesn't doesn't look good. Uh, I'd say that uh, 10 years from now, the cartoons in Asai are probably going to just either uh, just fade away. Right. Well, thank you. That's not an uplifting <laughs> conclusion, but it, I can't <laughs> argue with it. Bob Borgen has a question, uh, not so much of the cartoons, but of the underlying politics. You, if you open up the chat, you'll be able to see it for yourself. But although cartoonists mm -hmm. are very critical themselves of Japanese leadership, things seem to have worked out rather well. The Olympics went unexpectedly well. COVID seems to be under control at the moment. So uh, explain this for, for us. That's a, big, <laughs> that's a big order. It's uh, a big order. You know, the um, everybody's asking, scratching their heads, what's going on here? Uh, and, and every day we wait and see what the numbers are and they keep going down. When is this gonna start going up again? And the, the of course, not only are the numbers going down, but at the same time, people are still wearing their masks, still keeping social distancing, still being fairly careful and not saying, oh, it's, we're, we're, it's, we're free, we can do anything we want. It's still very controlled uh, in, there's still a lot of social discipline uh, that are keeping people from uh, spreading the disease. Uh, whether that's it, the cause or, 
you know, Korea next door has many of the same sorts of cultural um, protections in terms of, um, you know, bowing politely, not hugging, doing this and that, no handshaking, all of that. And yet Korea, the, the numbers are surging. And, and actually in the United States and in Europe, there are other countries where right now uh, the COVID-19 uh, is actually on the way up and up and up. Japan has just come down and, and how to explain it. Uh, one newspaper article in the Japan Times recently, a scientific study uh, proposed the idea that, well, maybe the, this uh, corona particular strand in Japan has mutated so much that it is now mutated in the form of self-destruction. Uh, it sounded strange, but actually it seemed to be somewhat um, plausible. You might want to look that article up, but basically nobody knows. Uh, but we're, yes. not, we're not arguing with it either. <laughs> right, well, if, if there's a self-destructing virus, you should export it. But, um, <laughs> my fear is that when us foreigners are let in, if that coincides with a yes, surge they're upwards. Still, they're, they're fairly it, still it, strict um, sort of border control measures in place. Yes. So there's Much a question from Sh Shigeru. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Miyagawa Shigeru at MIT has a question. He's intrigued oh, by the devil, the devil image. Where does that come from? You, you see it as early as the Mapakumatsu. Does it go oh, back it more deeply as than the, that? As the Nara period in Horyuji. Smallpox coming in in the uh, in Nara period uh, and in the form of a devil. Uh, and the, uh, and then, then we have to employ various Buddhist powers and other various, even sometimes other Buddhist devils to fight against the, uh, the disease devil. So it's, it's an old motif going way back to the first major smallpox um, epidemic in the uh, early 8th century, uh, was around the seven, 720s, I think it is. Uh, Todaiji itself was built as a sort of protection against the small, smallpox. Uh, and uh, so there's a um, number of images of devils all through uh, Japan's history as it confronted uh, epidemics, uh, largely coming from outside. So, and small, you get the, yeah. you know, you know Oniwa Soto, you know, but get, get rid of these devils. I see. Yeah, well, that, um, that is, that's, that's quite a while ago. <laughs> yeah. So another question from the audience from Sean DeHaven asking whether you've, have you taken a sideways glance at some of the conservative media, such as Yomiuri, to see how, do they, how they, if they do do political cartoons, I believe they I, do. And... Yeah, I'm, I really have to, and I haven't. I'm sorry to say I, you know, it's again, you know, I'm, I really, as a, I, I recognize that and that this is I have to do because as a, uh, as a scholar, uh, I feel myself to be mm, a little bit more on the progressive side, a, a good reader of Asahi Shimbun, but in order to understand the opposition side and the, uh, I really should be reading Fox News. I really should be reading the uh, Yomiuri and other uh, more mm, right-wing media sources, but I, I haven't. Um, that's, I that's certainly on my agenda. All right, well, we can have you back for another Okay, talk. okay, yes. <laughs> right, but um, Steve Erickson, who you know, has oh, um, yes. got a question about um, political cartoons historically. Mm -hmm. And what, do, do you see anything in um, the earlier cartoons uh, related to previous epidemics, such as the Spanish flu? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I uh, the uh, the Spanish flu epidemic. I actually got and looked in the Asahi and others, and you can see some cartoons. But again, the focus, just like the cartoons in the United States and so forth, we're rarely taking the government to res responsibility. They are much more uh, concerned about health issues um, and, uh, and, uh, don't, and, and, and providing some sort of advice, like uh, wear a mask, um, uh, or, you know, be, be, be sure to open your windows and there'd be cartoons. And, 
Um, one kind of interesting thing, be sure to open your windows, but then there's a corona devil, uh, a, a, a influenza devil right at your window. So there's sort of, um, you know, whether you should let that devil in or not is another question. Uh, so yes, um, but uh, I'm really also quite surprised on the other hand that in the more recent cartoons, there's so little concern with the health issues. Uh, there's uh, all sorts of issues that could be covered, for example, crowded hospitals, people dying at home, uh, ambulances circling around trying to find a hospital bed, going to seven, or even up to 100 hospitals before turning back and taking the patient back to the house. Those aren't included in the cartoons at all, those sorts of issues. It's really kind of pointing the finger, jabbing at the political leadership. And um, this also, I think, is, is perhaps... Uh, uh, at what point these the cartoons become more, not just editorial, but really political cartoons, uh, uh, almost to the uh, is, uh, is I, I don't know, uh, to, to study the whole long history of political cartooning in Japan. Um, yeah, that would be really interesting. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. one of the favorite cartoons I sometimes share in my classes from 1959 about when I was studying the rise of the modern consumer in post-war Japan. And mm -hmm. it's about consumer credit and the, the sort of Sadakin type boss and the, the maxed out um, family patriarch with an empty wallet because everybody's bought so much stuff on credit. So it's a social commentary. It's not about the state really. Yeah, and yeah. It, it, was, it was a brilliant cartoon. So mm -hmm. I wonder where that's gone. But there's a question from Christina Davis uh, or a hand up comment or question. Thanks so much. It was really enjoyable to hear. Oh, Christina, thank you. I love the analogy that cartoons are the canary in the coal mine for mm. democracy. And it is good to see jabs at political leaders are still allowed. Where would censorship of cartoons happen on this issue? And I wonder, socially irresponsible cartoons that mock wearing masks mm -hmm. or nationalistic cartoons that blame China. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think would be the form of censorship where a cartoon pushes against the acceptable limit no, in Japan? Yeah. yeah, no, I think it's, uh, um, it hasn't happened. Uh, I think the national dailies are fairly well self-censored. Uh, so you don't see those sorts of uh, really dramatic, uh, not, not only jabs, but really you know, going to the heart of things. Um, so it's, they're, not, they're, they're actually quite modest, I'd say, the Japanese cartoons. Online, you'll find that, though. Uh, so... Um, and uh, there, there's a fairly free space uh, for, uh, and uh, I think, uh, was it Sean De Haven's in message mentioned the, 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 the Ayomiri online uh, or Yahoo, yahoo.com uh, sites and so forth. Well, um, so I'd say it's self-censorship, but uh, so these are kind of polite jabs. Uh, and certain topics are, are just not brought up. Uh, for example, uh, you know, the shukanshi can take up things and do all sorts of scandals and uh, mm, various politicians and other people doing this and that. But that is actually kind of almost off limits for the political cartoons, uh, the editorial cartoons. Uh, we have the example of the, you know, of the former Princess Mako and uh, their husband Kay and going to New York. The shokanshi every week is just full of terrible stuff and rumors and this and that and so forth. But not once is the not only the uh, Miss uh, Mako and Kay are not mentioned in the cartoons, but not even the imperial family. That's just sort of kind of off limits still. Whereas um, uh, the imperial family is uh, very much part of the uh, sort of um, rep reporting in, in shukanshi. So that's there are different kind of medias that, that somehow. Um, are, are not, I don't think there are particularly much censorship in, in, that, in that regard. Uh, but the newspapers tend to be very conservative. Right. So I'm going to move to one chat, and then I think we'll have time to come back to the one more raised hand. But Shane Dahl asks, 
and this is related to Christina's question just now, are there political consequences for cartoonists in Japan? Uh, is it, it seems somewhat risky to openly criticize the government. Mm -hmm. and do you have any sense of this? I guess these, these folks have been at it since the 1950s or 60s, so uh -huh. they've survived. They've survived and they, and they haven't rocked the boat that much. <laughs> uh, so, uh, no, um, the, uh, um, name is not coming to me here. The, uh, uh, cartoonist who deals with the, um, uh, what do you call that? Goldman, what is it? Uh, there, there, are, there are a series of very right-wing, hard-pitting cartoons who criticize... Oh, Gomanism, Gomanism, yeah, Kobayashi. Yeah. Kobayashi, yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so those, those cartoons, and, and, but uh, he becomes a sort of cultural hero or a right-wing hero uh, for his uh, really very hard-pitting cartoons, manga series, uh, Gomanism. Uh, but, um, and I don't think has suffered any, any sort of, uh, consequences for his right-wing views. So no, uh, and, I, and on, on the other hand, they're, they're big bestsellers. Uh, so mm -hmm. the, well, the, the, um, they're probably the cartoonists of, uh, who are on Asahi are really, uh, uh, you know, I say they're progressive, but they're mild-mannered progressive. Right. Thanks. So there, um, I see a hand from Alan Iokibe. Mm -hmm. Hi. Thank you for Hi. Your, Hi. thank you for your presentation. And yes. well, that was so interesting. And thank you. I was so exciting about to uh, seeing the cartoon you shared us. Yes. And, yes. And also, I have a uh, one question about mm -hmm. that twist in Japan about COVID-19. Like I, I personally think a zero twist between the results of COVID-19 and political recognition. I, I mean, like, I think if you compare with the, uh, the Japanese situation with the other country situation, I think, I think it's pretty clear, like the Japanese government and Japan, Japan uh, has, been good, has been pretty well about COVID-19, you know, the results is pretty well, pretty good with, uh, uh, with other countries. But the people's evaluation for Japanese government is too low and so low compared mm -hmm. with other countries where the situation is far more terrible. And, and I was checked up the data and I, was, I have been seeing the, like, that in almost all countries, the results and political recognition and people's the variation of the government is almost correlated, but the Japan is exceptional. So why, you know, I wonder why the twist between results and national evaluations of government has been coming about in Japan on COVID-19. <laughs> and, and also, you know, your cartoons reflect, uh, reflect that kind of low evaluations of Japanese government. Mm -hmm. So what do you think that so why that kind of twist is coming has been coming about? Yeah. Mm. Well, I I don't know. And and say, Alan, do, yourself, do, do you actually do you read Japanese cartoons or in the newspapers? Uh, yeah. Are are yeah. you an uh, an active reader of newspapers? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I I uh, um. I, I I really uh, uh, can't really say you know why uh, public opinion polls consistently um, say well which political party do you support and well maybe thirty percent say the LDP and two or three percent here and there but the vast majority say oh, nope I don't I don't I don't uh, you know. And actually, uh, there is also a significant layer of people who are just completely, since the LDP has been in power for so long, they, they say, well, makasemasu. Uh, and there's a lot of political apathy in Japan as well, that, um, well, no matter what, it's not, nothing's going to change. Uh, the voter turnout rate in, you know, in national and uh, regional elections, you might get a um, high end of 20, sometimes even early 30%. But so they're not the 
voter interest in elections, even though the newspapers are full of, this is the position this here and the cartoons are there, the actual voter turnout is, is really not that big. Uh, but uh, why, maybe Andy has a, uh, a better answer than I do, but I can't really give you a good clear answer. I, I had I sh I shared Alan's um, puzzlement. I mean, I was very critical, and I wrote together with my colleague Michael Reich about the slow rollout of the vaccine in Japan, yeah. and it seemed that that was a tremendous mistake, at least in the short term, because it made the situation worse as as worse as it could possibly be right at the time of the Olympics. Whereas if yeah, yeah. the same rollout had proceeded in February, March through the spring, I think there would have been a, a different story. Uh, uh, but um, th that said, overall, and I felt this especially when I was in Japan during the pandemic in the spring to summer of 2020, and then after coming home, the, the Abe government and then the Suga government got such low marks yeah. for what they were doing for Corona. They were being blasted in not just Asahi, but in my friends who are mm. uh, who read other newspapers um, mm. as well they just thought it was atrocious and I compared the and then political leaders in other countries that as Alan said are doing so much work were so much worse were getting credit for their leadership or their calm demeanor mm. not not Trump but in 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 some you know in some European countries it baffles me I, mm. I don't there's a kind of harshness and cynicism towards Japanese political leadership that somehow is baked in yeah. to the story, um, I think. And I find it a puzzle, actually. So mm -hmm. I can't help you. <laughs> if, uh, you're gonna have to, you're gonna I share your puzzle. Yes. Well, I think, I'm sorry, there's one more question there from, okay. from Bill Marshall, but or, or Robert Marshall. But um, I think we're a few minutes past time, so I'm going to have to um, thank you very much. Okay. And let you go off to your day. Um, you can yeah. open up the morning paper now and, and translate yes, yes. this morning's cartoons if there are uh, any. No, no cartoon on Tuesday. Oh, okay. So you have a day <laughs> off. And um, here, for those of you who are here in the U.S. East Coast, um, it, it's getting a little late in the evening. So thank you all for joining. Oh, thank thank you. you, Bill, for joining us. I really enjoyed right. this. And um, I'll look forward to seeing you again. Good. ありがとう。Mm -hmm. right.